So let's quickly learn how we can do this nice gradient animation effect. You could see how it looks. You could see the second one. And I am making this for my template that I'm creating for like this nightclub single page event, like nightclub single event page or something. I'm working for this. I'm working to create this one into a template. And for that, I was just testing different styles. And I think this looks cool. And I'll show you how you can actually do this effect in any container that you want. And if you want to get this template, I'll link, I'll just have it in my website. And just remember that you actually need to have element approved for this and just click in the description and you will find the link for it, which is a paid stuff. And because we actually need something called custom CSS panel, which is this one, and it is only available for element pro. So you can get that. And the link is in the description that way you could support me. So let's quickly learn how I have, I have added this effect. So I'll just add a new section below that. So let me just, okay. So I'll just do is for me, I want this container to have that effect. Okay. So let me just make it full width. Let's add some 500 so that we can see it. So I want this container to have that gradient effect. And you could see that I already have a code that works perfectly fine. You could see, find it in the description and I'll quickly explain how, what we are doing. So we are using a pseudo class called after. So basically this pseudo class adds like a fake element after our container and let me show how this works. So right now we will call it selector, selector and then type after. And basically if you don't want to use selector and, and you are not using any elementor, you could use is add a CSS class to this container. I'll call this like G container. So that like gradient container. And then rather than selector, you could also add like dot G container and after and you could check like uh, what you call what after what this pseudo class does in another videos but basically we add a container after this element and let me show what we do so i'll first create like a background of red and you can see nothing's working because every pseudo element has to have or every after and before pseudo element has to have content and then here we will add like this stuff and here if I type red you could see that it says red around here because it is adding a content after this one with the background color of red if you want to do blue or if you want to do any other color you could do it and again this is not how we type for this code but let me show what we or how it works I'll make it position to be absolute so that it is not taking any space I'll make the height to be hundred percent I'll make the width to be 100%. And let's say if your stuff is not showing on this one. So sometimes you need to add like Z index. Like this and add some higher Z index in your container. So let, right now it is working. But sometimes you don't need to. And basically this is how it looks. I'll just remove the text. And right now we also can see that it is not working perfectly. Because it is going outside our container. So I'll add like a top of zero because this is something that you add with absolute values. So top zero and left zero. And then now we have it perfectly on top of it. So that is basically what we have done. We have done absolute height with top zero and left zero. And rather than using background color of red, we have used a background of linear color like this. And this are some let's say what you call these are the hex values that we have used so rather than using rgba you could basically just go and type this hex values too but the reason why i'm using rgba is because it allows us to add opacity to our uh, to our colors so by default if i just choose this one and then uh, let's just well not this one let's just copy and then paste it in here This is the color that we have, which is 0, 191, 255, but using 0.5 here makes the opacity to be 0.5. And same with that, we have three colors. So we have one, we have two, and we have three. And this is the, what you call, rotate option that we have added, how much rotate rotation it needs. Then we have our background size to 180% and 180% from X and Y. 
so let me just add that or let me just add this one first and this is how it looks you could see and if you don't know what you want to use on here you could basically go in here and test some gradient on this css gradient.io to look to get like the look that you want it to be something like this if you want to have something like this and then you could see that it actually uh, uh, converts it into this one so if you actually make this change it actually converts it for you like this and then like this and then like this so if i just copy this one you can just paste it in here like this and we got that gradient and then what i'll do is i'll add a background size like this and if i do 200 percent and then 50 percent it is actually making it 200 percent from the x-axis and 500 percent from the y-axis so you could see we are doing 50 percent or 50 percent background size so what i'll do is i'll do 200 and 200 you could do 180 180 or basically let's just remove this one for time being to show you what we are actually doing so i've removed the background size for now then we do is we add our animation class so basically we tell that this section has an animation called gradient animation which is this one it should run for three seconds it should ease is uh, it should ease in and out for infinite duration if you don't want want ease in and out you could do is make it like linear like this you could also add alternate like this so depending on what you want to do you could do it linear is basically everything would have like similar space ease is basically it will it would like uh, start with slower speed and then gain speed at the middle and then at the end it will again slow down the speed linear is constant speed alternate is basically it will go from 0 to 100 and then 100 to 0 so rather than going from 0 to 100 0 to 100 or constantly for example if i have something like well if i type paint please open paint so if this car if this ball goes from like 0 to 100 so this is 0 and this is 100 so this is like 0 percent and this is like 100 percent if you don't do alternate what it will do is it will suddenly at the for this is for example this is running for three seconds right now see and what it will do is in the animation state it will suddenly just pop back to zero rather than going from zero to 100 back so if this ball so so can i move this one okay so this is going from zero to 100 from left to right like this and suddenly when three seconds end it will suddenly pop up around here because we have set it to infinite duration right it does not just stops after one animation so it will just go from like one two three seconds and then again pop up back around here but if you do alternate it will do like zero one two three 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 if you choose to alternate okay so let's quickly add the animation and this one you could click like type anything it does not matter as long as it these two are same so just type this one and then z index is added and then border radius basically and border radius is basically for uh, the curvature so like 30 pixels 100 pixels you could do like percentage too i'll do like 25 pixels and 25 pixel from all four sides if you want to do like specific side you could do like 25 pixel like this and then do like zero zero pixel zero pixel and that way it will only have curvature on two sides You can see it is only having curvature on two sides. Twenty-five pixels. Next is the keyframe animation, CSS animation. And you could see nothing's happening because right now the background size or the image 
or whichever this gradient is is like the hundred percent size. So we want it to be bigger so that it can move. So right now we have like the background position. So background which is this one, it should move from like uh, y axis towards in the fifty percent in the y axis. Then x axis at the fifth location it should be around here. So at zeroth location it is at fifty percent. At fifty percent it is at the background is at hundred percent, fifty percent, and at the hundred percent we have again going from first location to the last location. So this one is like the same locations. So if I just make this one have a one eighty by one eighty, which is this one how it looks. This is how it would look or move. And here we will basically just choose whichever uh, what you call. Right now it is ninety degrees because it is. So if I just remove the background size, the gradient is going from ninety degrees. So it is going from like uh, in this manner in the ninety degree. But if I choose, let's say one or ten degree, it is going for ten degree, hundred and ten, fifty degree stuff like that. Right now I'll just keep it. I guess negative fifty. It looks good. And here we will just choose the background size to be 180, 180. So basically, we are making this gradient have bigger size than the container so that we can actually move it around. So you could see it's basically an image that we are moving left and right like this. And this is basically we are changing the X position from 50% to like this position to this position, and as the starting position and the end position are same it looks perfect so it goes back and forth and we got an animated gradient effect which is the same one as this one you could see it goes there and then goes back goes there goes back and it's the same animation that we are doing so pretty easy to make if you have any issues just let me know